Hey Carbon Steel fans, in this video I'm going to show you four brands of high carbon steel skillets and uh, let you be the judge of which features you like the best. I'll give you a close-up view and my overall impressions, but whether you're uh, experienced with carbon steel or considering making the jump from Teflon or stainless to carbon steel, um, Maybe this video will help you make a decision and uh, also decide on, on which brand would be best for you. Uh, I, can, I can tell you, uh, just to share a little bit about my experience with carbon steel, there is no other way to get vegetables uh, crispy, crunchy, but yet um, slightly charred on, on uh, one side, or a steak perfectly seared, but yet still uh, rare in the middle. And uh, one of the reasons why is because you're cooking on a disc of steel. It's, it doesn't have any uh, heating properties laminated into the middle of it. Uh, the forgers have done nothing to cause it to hold heat better or worse. It's just a piece of steel and it heats up very, very quickly and it cools down very, very quickly. And that enables a cooking style which you can't replicate. With, uh, with a traditional Teflon pan. I find it really enjoyable. It, um, it really makes my experience in the kitchen uh, much better. And I'm able to craft dishes that I normally uh, wouldn't be able to, or frankly, probably wouldn't even think of until I started cooking on steel. So, um, so with that, let me show you these pans. Let's start with Solid Technics. This was uh, my first experience with carbon steel. These two pans were actually my first pans. And uh, they got quite a bit of heavy use in the beginning. And after I realized that I was addicted, I then moved into handmade pans, which we'll get to later. Uh, but this pan has served me well. One of the unique characteristics of a Solid Technics pan is that it's stamped from one piece of steel. So there's no rivets here to catch food. It also has a cool handle. These uh, this fluted design here keeps the handle nice and cool, which is really a nice feature. If you've gotten used to this type of steel, you, you never have to uh, grab a hot pad before you grab the pan, unless, of course, you put it in the oven. Uh, but under most circumstances, it stays nice and cool. All the solid Technic pans have a nice pour lip, so if you are pouring uh, fat or juice out, the, the pan tends to not drip uh, like some of the other pans. And, this radius here is fantastic for flipping or ladling juices up onto, say, a piece of fish or meat in the pan. I mostly use this size for heating up, um, you know, single servings, maybe grilled cheese, eggs, things like that, uh, smaller dishes. I do use this on my barbecue grill as well, uh, but mostly on the stovetop. This pan is exactly the same. It just has a little bit less use, as you can tell, and um, it's larger. This is their 8 inch, and then this is their uh, 10 inch. Same features, relatively lightweight. It's got a stamp out of Australia here for the hook eye, which is kind of neat. And um, on the bottom, they tell you about their brand, a little bit about uh, the pan. They call it Oss Iron, which uh, is their trade name for high carbon steel. Last year, Solid Technics came out with a different type of uh, pan surface. Basically what they did is they took their existing pans. Now, I got this size because it was the larger of the collection. And in this size, it has a nice handle here. It's shaped like a heart, which is kind of nice, I guess. Um, same handle design stays cool, but the main difference in this pan is it's textured. So when I got it, it had kind of a matte finish as opposed to a slick finish. And what they did was sandblasted it or shot it with some kind of uh, metal shot to cause a very, very fine pitting texture. Well, what that's done is it's caused the seasoning to stick way better. I've had some situations where the seasoning builds up in this pan and flakes off and you just have to kind of wipe it out before you use it. That doesn't happen at all on this pan because the texture holds the seasoning so well that um, that uh, it just performs better. So that was a really nice upgrade. It causes the pan to season slightly differently. You know, it's kind of a bronze color versus the black. And um, this pan has gotten quite a bit of use 
So I'm uh, pretty sure that is the color that it's going to stay. But anyway, that's a close up. Also, um, the last of my solid Technics pans. I do have a couple solid Technics cast iron, which I reviewed in a different video. But this is what started it all, this company for me. These were my first pans, mostly because they were affordable. Uh, I got them on Amazon. They are kind of hard to get now. They seem to always be out of stock. Uh, but this was my first experience with cast iron. I mean, I'm sorry, with uh, car high carbon steel. So I realized I was hooked and I decided to go ahead and purchase a hand forged pan. And this was my first one. It is uh, made by Christ Centered Forgers. It's a rather small company and uh, you can check them out on Etsy, on Facebook, and uh, I believe they have a website, but I purchased this through Etsy. And uh, it was kind of pricey uh, for what you get. You know, it's just a simply bent disc of steel. There's not an incredible amount of, of work in it. Um, you know, they do a really good job of keeping the hammer marks out and the handle is very, very simple and it's just hammered flat and then riveted in place. But this pan, um, I use it now primarily for quesadillas. It fits a tortilla perfectly. And because it's slightly thicker and has a more uniform shape than some of my other pans, it heats really evenly. So I've been real happy with this pan. I, I used it a lot when I first got it for, you know, searing vegetables and, and meats and, and eggs and different things. But now it has become kind of my family's uh, quesadilla pan and it makes a mean quesadilla. So that is a close-up view of that. And it is probably one of the simplest designs uh, that I have seen. And it definitely serves its purpose really well. It's got unbelievably sloped. That makes it great for the quesadilla, but for flipping eggs and stuff, you can get just right up in there. Uh, I'm sure you can tell from the video, but this is really angled out and uh, almost nearly flat. So that's the Christ Centered Forgers pan and it's uh, it's about an 11 inch. So then I uh, decided to get my Blocks Creative Skillet which was this one. It's my very first pan and I'm gonna I'm gonna finish up with the Blanc Creatives uh, pans because I use them the most and uh, I'll give you more detail on these. This is a blue iron uh, or blue skillet ironworks. It's a, uh, a couple in Seattle that uh, they've got a pretty neat story on YouTube and they uh, started making pans and people started buying the pans and uh, they're kind of amazed <laughs> according to their YouTube video that people uh, buy their pans but they have kind of uh, made themselves an exclusive niche in the market. And the reason for that is they don't make very many. They put them on sale twice a year on their website at blueskillandiron.com and they sell out in 10 minutes. Last October, I think it was, they put these pans for sale, 500 pans. They sold out in 10 minutes and they uh, shipped my pan in late December. So I did get it in time for Christmas, uh, but it was about a three month turnaround. So I decided on this size because I don't have an au gratin pan or a big chicken fryer. Uh, so that's why I picked this one and I've been really, really happy with it. They do an incredible job forging the pan. It is uh, flat on the bottom. It has most of the hammer marks have been hammered out. It's got big beefy handles. You can see their logo is stamped on one of them and that's the only markings on the whole pan. They're riveted in with very sturdy rivets. I can fill this completely with oil. The rivets don't leak. Um, it makes a great chicken fryer. It's rather heavy. Uh, so most of the time this is my paella pan. I've made um, um, uh, uh, steel skillet lasagna. Uh, it would, this would make an awesome uh, cornbread. But, uh, but anyway, I mostly use this for larger dishes. If I'm cooking a bunch of vegetables, 
Uh, this is the pan that, that I'll use. It's got really high sides, it's very sturdy, it doesn't wobble around on the stove, and if it needs to go in the oven, it's easy enough. I do need to remember to use hot pads. The rest of these pans have cool handles. This one does not. <laughs> I've been burned a couple times forgetting. But uh, for this design, this is really one of my favorites. I use it on my barbecue grill a lot also, and um, I've even, I even have a charcoal smoker that I've used it in, and it just keeps getting better with time. I mean, it really is an amazing pan. So that's a close-up of the blue skillet ironworks, and uh, really neat company. I will absolutely buy another one of these pans. It's a slightly heavier gauge than the Blanc Creatives, and it does have a more finished design, although I have to admit I really love the hammer marks of the Blanc Creative. Um, but I'll get another one in this size uh, because uh, just to compare and, and have the two of them, I found that this is my daily pan. Okay, so now I want to feature the Blanc Creatives pans because I use them the most. <clears throat> and it's a really neat company. You know, they make, they make all kinds of stuff. They make um, wood, you know, bottle openers. Uh, they have some uh, really neat arts and crafts. They, they sell t-shirts. Uh, you can check them out on YouTube under Blanc Creatives. And um, I saw about them, I, I heard about them through, I think it might have been Anthony Bourdain or somebody else did a, uh, a special on them. And that's how I first heard of them. And so I went online and I ordered this pan. And at the time, they would stamp your name in it. So I've got my name stamped in this pan. That was kind of cool. And um, I loved the pan. It took about two months to get. Since then, the they turnaround time is, uh, is about the same. Most of these pans are about two months. And um, the handle is really long and comfortable, and it stays cool to the touch thanks to this gigantic fork that they use to uh, rivet it you know, in the design. Um, it is great for French toast, eggs. If I'm cooking for you know, a larger meal for a family, I, use, I cook vegetables in this. I, 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 th I, this was my, my go-to pan. I used it pretty much daily, as you can tell by the color. And uh, it's got a handle on this other side in case you do need to lift something heavy. So this was my first experience with them. And I liked them so much that I bought uh, this pan. And this is uh, basically the same the design. However, it's got uh, more of a cupped rim, same handle. This is a 10 inch and uh, no markings. They stopped putting the name on it. They put their logo right here on the handle. But this pan I use every single day, whether it's any, any type of food, I use this pan every day. And it's mainly due to the size, the balance, it heats evenly, it cools down quickly, it seasons perfectly. I love the design. When you bring this pan to the table with a dish in it, everybody comments. It is a work of art. If you look closely, you can see all the hammer marks that they've left in it. Now, I cook on a glass top, and if you look at some of my older videos, you'll see that I've heated up all three of these Blanc Creatives pans and the blue skillet, and I've hammered down the middle with a board. Check out one of my videos uh, uh, actually reviewing the Blanc Creatives pan. I think it was this one, maybe. Um, but check out that video and uh, you'll see what I've done. And the reason for that is I have a glass top. And when these heat up, they change shape slightly. So what I've done is hammered down on the center so that it's slightly concave on the back when it's cold. And when it heats up, it flattens out perfectly so it sits nice and flat and it doesn't wobble or spin on my glass top. But that's a close-up of their 10-inch and I believe they call this the fryer and they call this the saute because it has shorter walls and a slightly steeper angle than the fryer which is angled more. And as far as flipping anything, the spatula gets right in there. I wouldn't change anything about this pan and if I could only have one pan, this would be the one that I take. Okay, this is my latest and the folks over at Blanc Creatives uh, made this for me special, which is really kind of an honor. Uh, 
this pan originally was like this pan. It was a gratin pan. Um, it had handles on both sides like this. And I asked them to put the long handle on for me because I really wanted a gigantic fryer that I could shake on the grill or on the uh, stove top. I wanted to have a um, long handle on one side the, um, that stays cool to the touch. And they warned me about the weight and uh, I agree, it's heavy. It's difficult to just hold on to out there, but I don't ever do that. And I'm really glad that I got it. It's a, it's a great compliment to this pan from Blue Skillet. So you can see this pan hasn't been used as much. It's starting to season out in the middle. This will work its way all, the, all the way to the edge and then eventually this blue color will turn uh, black. But until then, I get to enjoy this beautiful blue patina. The way that this occurs is they polish the pans and then they heat treat them. When they heat treat them, it causes the steel to turn blue. And that adds this really unique color and uh, this is another pan, you know, you bring this to the table, it almost doesn't matter what's in it, it instantly gets more attention and, and I think it even tastes better cooking in these types of pans with that seasoning in there. But anyway, there's a close-up of my largest carbon steel. You can see that the rivets uh, kind of build up some grease in the seasoning process and that just adds to the character of the pan. But, uh, but there you go. That's the, uh, that's the last one of this series here. So, you know, if you go to these websites and you check out uh, these pans, you're going to, you may be shocked by the prices. And you have to remember that this is made by hand. Uh, they turn out an incredibly low number of these pans, especially the blue skillet folks. So you're, you're buying a one of a kind and you're also buying something that could last forever. If, if you give or pass down these pans to anyone who is committed to cooking in carbon steel and they care for the pan, it'll last forever. There is nothing to wear off. It'll just keep getting better. And if it's ever uh, you know, screwed up by neglect or lots of acidic cooking, you know, for instance, if uh, whenever I'm cooking fish, you know, that is actually what happened to this one. I, I cooked some fish recently. Uh, it was two uh, really beautiful chunks of tuna and I squeezed lemon juice all over it and it pulls the seasoning off a little bit. So in time, that seasoning will build back up and, uh, and they last a lifetime. They last a lifetime and they last through every generation's lifetime that is willing to keep up with them. So anyway, uh, that is my uh, current collection of high carbon steel. I can't wait to get another blue skillet. So that'll be uh, my next purchase. I think they go on sale in uh, June maybe. So I'll be waiting online. And uh, if you get into this, please leave a comment. If you have any comments, um, I'm, I'm, I would love to hear them. And if you have any brands that you love that I have yet to discover, please leave those in the comments because uh, I just really love new stuff. So thanks for watching. I hope this uh, video was, was informational for you. Please subscribe to my channel. I post new videos all the time and I would love for you to be a subscriber. Thanks for watching.